worth noting, this weekend marked 74 years since the United Nations Relief Works Agency was founded, ostensibly to serve the needs of Palestinian refugees. It's the only UN agency to cater in such a way to a specific ethnic group, and under their leadership, this refugee population has more than tripled, and their budget funds war propaganda in schools across both Gaza and the West Bank. Does the agency actually serve anybody besides eternal war? Well, to join us now is Maurice Hirsch, Lieutenant Colonel Maurice Hirsch, Director of the Initiative for Palestinian Authority Accountability and Reform, joining us from Jerusalem. Maurice, it's good to have you on. I know it's been a long time since we spoke, but we've previously spoken on this exact topic. What is the current purpose of UNRWA? There is no real purpose to UNRWA. Um, I have to just, if I may, just correct one thing that you said in, in your introduction. The refugee population of the Palestine refugees hasn't grown up, grown by three times or four times. It's grown by almost nine times since UNRWA was created. In 1949, UNRWA was dealing with 711,000 people. Today, it deals with 6.7 million people. It's the only UN organization that completely fails in its entire goal of resettling any refugees um, and has still carried on working. So you ask, what's the point of UNRWA? Clearly, the point of UNRWA isn't to resettle refugees because not one refugee has been resettled. Rather, the numbers of uh, refugees have just grown. So UNRWA's only real purpose is to perpetuate this idea that the, that the descendants of the Palestine Arabs who left Israel in 1948 will one day come back to Israel and destroy it demographically and then democratically. Now, Maurice, one of the things that we have seen UNRWA do is fund so-called schools and teaching and education in both the West Bank and in Gaza. Walk us through what that education actually is and what the results of that have been. Well, in a shameful way, the, the UNRWA schools in the Gaza Strip have merely and simply adopted the curriculum of the Palestinian Authority. Now. UNRWA knows that this curriculum breaches its own duty of neutrality. It breaches every one of the basic principles of the United Nations. It's a curriculum that teaches hatred, that teaches anti-Semitism, that teaches for the destruction of Israel and Jews in general. And this is what the UNRWA curriculum and UNRWA schools have been teaching um, all the way through the generations. It is claimed by UNRWA that almost three quarters of the people in the Gaza Strip are UNRWA refugees. So that means that statistically, three quarters of those who participated in the, the October 7 massacre were actually those who were educated in these UNRWA schools. That's how, where they learned this, this deep hatred of Jews and their ability to simply go into the streets, go into, into the Israeli towns and villages and kibbutzim and simply slaughter Jews. That's the product of the UNRWA education. But it's not just education, it's also operationally. We saw stories of UNRWA teachers holding hostages locked in their own attic and starving them. How much crossover do we see between UNRWA's ground personnel and terror organizations themselves? We have to understand that, that, that UNRWA works on the ground in Gaza. Gaza is not one of these Western free democracies um, where everyone is free to be employed by whoever they want and any employer can employ whoever they want. Um, they work in Gaza. Gaza for the last 18 years has been under the, the tight control of uh, uh, Hamas prior to that of the Palestinian Authority. The people who work in UNRWA, the people who are employed by UNRWA are all those people who those terrorists are interested in being part of that mechanism. Their friends, their relatives, um, their sons, their daughters, whoever it may be. That's one of the tremendous forms of nepotism that exists within Palestinian society. You want to move up, you get a job with the, the UN. And then you find, or you're not surprised to find, that within these mechanisms, within the schools of UNRWA, they hide terrorists and weapons. The UNRWA teachers um, all complement and, and, and really hail the success of the October 7 massacre. Um, UNRWA teachers are then involved in actually holding the hostages. 
None of this is surprising when you consider where the background of the UNRWA staff comes from. They're mostly uh, um, people on the ground in Gaza who are part of that mechanism. And we're talking about almost 12,000 people employed by UNRWA in the Gaza Strip. Um, that's what you see, this picture of the really intertwined relationship between the organization that really promotes the basic idea of the Hamas ideology to destroy Israel, working under the auspices of the United Nations, helping Hamas achieve that very same um, uh, ob objective of destroying Israel. So does that mean UNRWA is the problem in and of itself, or is it simply a symptom of the terrorist regimes that control Palestinian territories? UNRWA, UNRWA is a problem in and of itself, in that it perpetuates this idea that the refugees will one day uh, uh, flood Israel and destroy it without ever having regard for well, what we can we do to resettle uh, um, these uh, uh, um, uh, uh, these the, these so-called refugees, um, including just a, a, as an amazing fact, um, I don't think many people know that as part of the the discussions after Israel's war of independence, Israel actually offered to incorporate Gaza into part of Israel and to give every one of its residents Israeli full Israeli citizenship. That was rejected by uh, the Arab countries, and then UNRWA stepped in and has forever since objected to any idea of resettling um, the uh, Gazan uh, refugees. Really, UNRWA has been providing this crutch for the anti-Israel movement, this uh, uh, homeland, this idea of, 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 of we will eventually be able to destroy Israel. That's part of the UNRWA ethos. Uh, um, and it's really its only raison d'etre, because otherwise it would have worked to settle all of the the, the, the refugees in all of the different countries. Why are people who have been living in Lebanon for the last 75 years still refugees, UNRWA refugees, Syria, Jordan, the same thing? Only because UNRWA perpetuates this idea that those people will one day destroy Israel. Otherwise, they would have worked to ensure that these people were integrated into these countries as full citizens rather than being used as pawns to vilify Israel. Wow, it's a chilling and eye-opening look at the corruption of an international so-called aid organization.